are so these yes for, um live on the website or who, what are they used for just so you know yeah absolutely so um we will be putting these on the website there's an iron um huddle page on the udl iron website so those will be posted there and then they are recorded just sometimes we have participants that aren't able to attend and then would like to see the feed the um, video feed from it. So just to hear what the committees are up to. So that's the reason that we record them. And those people will have access to the, um, the share out document as well, the meeting agenda. Thank you. Alrighty, so I will start with the summit. I'll get started with the summit stuff first. So we announced the dates for the 2019 summit. Hopefully all of you have heard that already. So that will be March 27th through the 29th in Orlando, Florida. We are returning to the Doubletree at the entrance to Universal Studios, just like we were at um, this past April. So um, hopefully all of you will be able to attend. This, uh, the upcoming committee effort, efforts that we'll be working on in the next month or so, we are working on CFPs. Those should be released mid-August, same as last year. Um, so keep an eye out for those and make sure to send those along to any of your peers that would be interested in attending and presenting. Um, we are working to refine this process both on the front end so that it's easier for people to submit their CFP, but then also on the back end so that it's easier to sort through them and um, create an agenda that will appeal to all of the attendees. Um, and then also the summit website is going through a big revamp this year. So keep an eye out for that. We'll release that um, obviously before the CFPs. So or, or released mid August. Um, any questions on summit stuff before we move on? No, excited. Yeah, it's gonna be a good year. All right, awesome. So that's it for Summit. And Kavita, do you want to take it over for research? Sure. So research committee. Um, I'll just give a little bit of background. At the summit this year, I had a lot of people express interest in joining the research committee. I think there were maybe five or six people in addition to the five or six that we have. So I was doing a little bit of thinking about how to integrate that big uh, number of people because it starts to become often just really unwieldy because you, you people can't meet and all of that. We already have trouble with five people getting everybody together. So I was giving some thought to what to do with such a large group of interest. So last year, as you all know, we did the work groups where we had, we broke into subgroups and that worked well. Some, some work groups had impetus, some didn't. And so it just depended on the work group. But um, then people who expressed interest this year were all different people. We didn't really have a structure to put them in subcommittees. So I talked one-on-one -on -one with several of the research committee members and um, the existing members who kind of know the flow. And we talked about just setting up a few things that we do for the year rather than try to have a group of 12 trying to figure out what directions to go, which I think we'd end up spending all our meetings just talking about what to do. Um, my committee uh, decided, well, let's set up a few things that we do and then people can pitch in and participate. The new people can pitch into the, the um, endeavors that we've kind of thought through. So that's kind of where we're going. Um, I, we haven't met since the summit, partly because we're all traveling and um, it was summer for most of us here at the university. So um, we're all traveling and things like that. But I have been emailing people one-on-one -on -one to, to flesh this out. So based on all of that, what we've kind of what we're thinking of doing is having a series of webinars for 2018-2019 and we'll use these webinars to focus on topics of research and we will connect it to the things that we've already been doing. So in 2017, we established the research priorities and then in 2018, we've been the work groups we're working on tools and resources. So we'll use this webinar series to get the broader community looking at the things we've developed, giving feedback, um, giving voice to some of the researchers who are doing researcher research. Um, and that way we can integrate the new people by having groups um, help facilitate and develop those webinars. So that was one way to integrate the larger group, take things we've already been doing and share it with the larger community. So that's a huge preface to say that I think we're gonna focus our work on maybe three or four webinars in, the, in 2018, 2019. Um, I'm gonna try to convene the committee, the smaller committee, in August so that we can just look at some topics and have a topical flow. Um, I've kind of ran it by Mackenzie who, who said she can help with the logistics. So once we get this together, we'll start picking some dates and working with the IRN to publicize and, and have those webinars. So that's kind of where we are. Um, trying to think what else. Um, 
the only other things that we've been doing this summer are just keeping updating the existing database. I usually keep track of new articles that are um, published in the UDL research arena, and then a few of us vet them to make sure they meet the criteria for the database. And um, Mackenzie, what I'm going to do once we have a set is send it to you so you can add it to the database. Um, Perfect. Kind of what we've been doing um, while we're since we're not meeting as regularly over the summer. Um, and that's basically it for what, what's been done since the last time we met. I forgot, Mackenzie, to put on here, I, I should put that I talked with you and Jamie, and we, we are talking about having a research strand at the next summit. So Jamie is going to put something in the CFP. So if people are interested in um, talking about their UDL research in particular, we're just going to tag some of the proposals in a research strand so that people know that this is about UDL research. And we can just be a little bit more deliberate that these are research um, research related sessions so that's that's one thing that we're a direction that we're going in for next um the next summit and that's it any questions i would also welcome feedback if any, in fact i was going to reach out to steve and mackenzie when, it, when people first asked about joining if you have any ideas for what to do with such a large group or you know if you have any feedback on um the issues of having a large committee i'd be i'd be glad to also consider any feedback that you have on being efficient with that many people. Yeah, I think uh, I'd be happy to talk with you about that. I don't know that I have any great answers, but the EdTech committee has varied between anywhere between six to, you know, 15 members. Uh, so definitely have a similar issue. And I think we're at kind of a transition point in the original charter that was developed almost three years ago uh, and where we are today. Not that a lot of the stuff we have doesn't need to continue, but just kind of grabbing hold of people's interest. Uh, so I certainly can learn from you and kind of the work group concept that, that you've proposed. Okay, good, that's good to know. I think one of the things- so, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, I thought, that, please go ahead. It was a different topic. Oh, I was just going to say, I think one of the things with the large committee that I realized last year when, um, when different people come to different meetings, we could never carry a strand through. So I was trying to think of efficiencies to have some, some baseline things going that people can contribute to no matter when they jump into meetings. So. Sue, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, just a question um, and then an offer about the, the webinars. Um, you know, we have our, our Network and Learn series. So I, I guess the question is, and I'll follow it up with the offer, is the target for those webinars then um, only researchers? And then the second offer, the second part of the offer is, if there are ever some that are more for the general public about research, we're always looking to bring our network and learn audience to that topic. So, um, you know, if there's a way that I can help or we can help support getting that word out that we're, we're willing to do that. So I, I think our thinking is, I haven't asked the committee, but I'm pretty sure we're thinking that this would be for anybody. So the web, our webinars wouldn't necessarily be for any specific audience. They would be geared towards topics of research, but we would open it up to anybody. So they could easily be part of the network and learn and we can, you know, research thing or something but um I was even thinking it would be great to publicize them in the in the weekly updates that Mackenzie sends out so yeah so we're not we're not limiting this to researchers by any means it's just come learn about issues of research so one of the that I think that's excellent I, I I'm very excited about that in fact we just had our PD committee today and I was just saying to Alex who's on our call with us today that um, we feel like we have not done enough for higher ed and research and, and, and are always feeling like, because most of us on that committee are uh, implementers, you know, we don't have a lot of that background. And so um, I, I think it would be wonderful if we could weave it into the sort of the network and learn brand, um, but leave it to you and your committee to, to organize it and, and, and uh, uh, bring in their the um, speakers and you know all the pieces that go along with that and we could share with you the strategies that we've used to make those uh, network and learns kind of happen that would be great I would love to learn from you on that as far as the, the logistics and organization so yeah let's if it's okay with Mackenzie and Steve and everybody else involved I, I think it would be great for our webinars to be part of that series with just research topics that we have. that would be wonderful yeah I think that's a great suggestion and I think it makes sense for the UDL, like people as well, that it's not these different webinar series. UDL Iron has one series, they have different, you know, different uh, focus areas. So I think that would be nice. 
That's great. So right now we have a uh, sort of just a general topic one, and then we have something we call our uh, ask me anything series. And then we have uh, kind of a panel series. And so this would be a fourth one. It'd be great to have those, that kind of mix up, you know, that, um, you know, every so often it's a different kind of a network and learn. And we kind of try to tag them with those uh, sort of bylines so that people know what they're getting when they join that webinar. So that, this would be wonderful. Do you think we could even call it something really direct so people know, like network and learn topics in research or something like sure. that? Sure, absolutely. And if we Whatever you want to do. Yeah, because I was thinking even for the summit, Mackenzie, if we could have a very clear byline for those proposals, topics in research. So that's just that it can be any topics in research, whether it's your own study or a tool you're making. I, so maybe we can use the same byline we use for the network and learn down yeah. the line. I think that's a great idea. Okay, great, thank you. I'll take that back to the committee as well, but I think that should be fine. The only other comment I had, Kavita, is as we move forward with learning design, it'll be really important for us, and I know we've talked about this before, but important for us to make sure that we get all the research articles and resources that you've been cataloging and make sure that we include those in learning design as well. Okay. Well, they're right now all available on your the website, so yep. <laughs> Mackenzie. Um, but yes, so I, I have a you know a big database of it all in one place too. So any anything you need to port it over would be fine. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you, Kavita. Thank so you. then we'll move right on down to the professional development committee, Sue. Sorry, I just said muted. <laughs> um, so we have been working with Mackenzie on the CFP. So again, Kavita, that was great that you mentioned that adding that research strand because we met today to talk about the, the um, categories of the CFP. And so we'll, we'll be able to build that right in. That's wonderful. Um, and we've also been working on our Network and Learn series. So the two things that we're just, uh, we're talking about earlier with Kavita's group. Our Network and Learn for August is Beach Read, so we're excited about that. Um, we're gonna highlight several of the recent, most recent books that have come out. Um, um, and again, most of them have been K-12, and so um, if Kavita and or Alex have some suggestions about authors who are doing, um, I know Alex did give offer us one idea, of authors who are writing for higher ed, we would love to include someone from that perspective as well. Uh, and then in um, September, we're gonna have a, our network and learn about um, classroom environment and space design. So designing uh, your, your classroom or your learning environment uh, with UD, under the UDL framework and uh, hopefully have David Reed and several others join us for that session. So we have a, a pretty good schedule started for this year, but we certainly can make room for the research committee. And um, whenever you guys are ready to go, Kavita, just let us know and um, we're happy to, to move things around uh, to accommodate what makes sense for the whole organization. Okay, great. I'll try to get some, some semblance of a schedule together so we can coordinate. Okay. That'd be great, thanks. And that's it, Mackenzie. All right, perfect. Any questions for Sue? No? All right, awesome. All right. I do have a quick question. If, if there's a case, Sue, where I could, our committee has a specific month they want to do something, is it okay to do two in a month? Do, oh yeah, absolutely. Or we can always move ours too. Okay. So the so far we don't have any commit. We have our August is committed, and so we can be um, flexible. But yes, we absolutely could do more than one in a month, um, or we could juggle things throughout. Okay. So don't be afraid to say we'd really like to have this month and this day. That's fine. Okay. Perfect. Oh, and, and maybe another logistical question. They usually they usually happen evening East Coast time. Is that correct? That's right. And is there a specific day that you all have selected? You know, we've kind of bounced around a little bit. We've kind of done tried to stick stay away from Mondays and Fridays, which leaves us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We kind of focus mostly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and in part, for a while, we were trying to um, coordinate it with the UDL chat that happens, and that seemed to work well for a while. And so we've just kind of been moving it around, trying to find a day that works best. But quite honestly, it's just sort of, um, you know, we do the best we can. Okay, great. 
Yeah, and there's a UDL chat tonight. There you go. All right, perfect. Thank you, Sue. So now we'll move down to EdTech Industry Committee with Steve. So as I kind of alluded to earlier in the conversation, we've, uh, we've had some great participation in the committee and a lot of passionate folks. One of the things that the people in the ed tech space, especially those who are on the vendor side and selling products rely on is a really good sense of that market demand. And market demand for UDL to date has been hard to characterize. So as one of the goals that we had for our committee was try as best as possible to capture information about that market demand to create awareness and, and to characterize that demand. And as I indicated, it's not always been easy to do that. There aren't always clear signs. Certainly the inclusion of UDL and ESSA uh, a couple years ago was a huge boost. And we see some of the reaction to that. So I've listed some of the elements recently that we've been sharing within the committee. Uh, we knew about New Hampshire's inclusion of uh, UDL within their ESSA plan and in particular including the UDL credentialing and certification initiative uh, as specifically named within that. So that was fabulous when we saw that and then their final plan that came out more recently still included that same wording. So a strong indication that they're going to move forward not with just their current plans around UDL implementation but even expand that throughout the state. Uh, California has a new initiative and uh, Jose Blackerby and Jamie Basham and I had the opportunity to travel out to meet with folks in Santa Clara County who are running that initiative. And Allison Posey zoomed in with us during those conversations. The nice thing that we're learning about there is they're prioritizing UDL in that statewide initiative. So I'll be able to share more as that evolves, but the upshot is we're seeing strong indications of leadership for that uh, California One initiative to prioritize universal design for learning in their initial uh, credentialing. So wonderful extension to the work that's being done in the UDL credentialing and certification initiative. Um, and Sue has been helping tremendously on the uh, beta test, which has been going on this summer for the UDL CCI, the credentialing and certification initiative. And as part of that, we've been very fortunate to receive comments from people that are expressing their interest in the beta test. So it's really helping us nuance what people are interested in about UDL. What is their particular role within their school or district or university? And, and what are they looking to know more about? And what are they looking to support within their community? So as we gather more of that information, it will be some really solid data points for us to share in the future about that market demand. Um, the committee certainly has recognized and some of the committee members in particular are strongly entrenched in the accessibility space. Uh, that's their primary role within their company. And as part of that, we recognize that Accessibility because of lawsuits certainly has a much larger demand and obviously there are legal restrictions around that. Uh, and then there certainly has been continued focus on personalized learning, but yet the connection between accessibility and the connection between personalized learning and universal design for learning, which we all know accessibility is a foundational component within the UDL framework and the UDL framework can be that foundational framework for personalizing learning. The community at large doesn't really see that connection as well as they should. So that's one of the things that we are talking about within the committee and trying to better portray uh, to help people better understand UDL. And that leads to the second major point that we've been talking about, which is kind of that bridge from accessibility to UDL and leveraging that market demand for accessibility to create greater awareness and demand for UDL. And as part of that, we've talked about the idea of an accessibility pledge, 
Some of you may be familiar with a student privacy pledge that's been around since 2014. And if you're not, if you go ahead and just Google student privacy pledge, you'll see it pop up. There's well over 300 signatories on that pledge. So the idea in a similar fashion is to create greater uh, awareness and uh, kind of marketing opportunities for companies who are being great citizens around accessibility. There was a keynote at uh, CSUN event earlier in the spring that referenced that idea. And uh, a company at an IMS global event uh, in May highlighted that they're actually including an impact ready profile for companies that includes accessibility as one of the, an accessibility profile as one of the components. So again, we're seeing that demand and we're trying to think uh, as effectively as possible as a committee on how we can leverage that demand to create greater awareness of UDL. I included a couple of links to some accessibility statement starters that we found and hope that uh, you know folks can take advantage of those and certainly see the connection between those accessibility statement starters and what we may be able to do with UDL in the future. The last major point I had related to work that we're working on is, as I've said before, uh, uh, kind of that best practices and by extension, the UDL CCI or Credentialing and Certification Initiative. So funding from New Profit and Oak Foundation uh, that's been received since the last time we had a, a huddle meeting is supporting the building of a UDL core credential and a building and school certification in UDL. So the benefit there is we've already been able to have an associate credential and are working on that during the beta testing that I mentioned this summer, but now we'll be able to move beyond that and extend more toward greater understanding of UDL and then even move into kind of a systems level adoption and implementation of UDL with that building and school certification. So specifically for the EdTech group, I've talked in the past about an EdTech certification, and we do have a draft out there, uh, but we're currently seeking additional funding to be able to support the advancement of that particular certification. Uh, but in the meantime, the uh, as I said, the associate credential has been finalized and we're in the beta testing for that within learning design, the online platform, and, uh, and then also going to do some user experience evaluation of the learning design platform. So some of the upcoming things uh, continue focused on that accessibility pledge, continue focused on uh, learning design as a platform for UDL CCI, and developing some updated ideas and models for capturing and characterizing that market demand. And for needs, uh, there still is time to support the summer beta for learning design. So the link is provided there for a beta test application. And then anyone who has insights on capturing or characterizing market demand for UDL and K-12 and higher ed, definitely welcome that input. So thank you. Awesome, thanks, Steve. Any questions for Steve? No, all right, great. I will move into the Global Learning Committee update then. So it sounds like they haven't made any huge progress since the last time we met around the summit. If you guys remember at the summit, uh, Louis shared a survey and some of the results from the uh, international survey that they had um, put together at the summit. And um, I guess after that, they had asked for additional survey takers that had only had two after the summit. So no, no huge progress there either. It sounds like upcoming, they're going to want to understand the platform a little bit better. So Steve, they mentioned that they wanted to meet with you just to see how to stimulate a community around the Global Learning Committee um, using the platform. So that is where the Global Learning Committee is at. And then Sue, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to mention our Great Lakes event. 
Thanks, Mackenzie. Yeah, we're excited. We're um, offering our second annual Great Lakes Regional Event. Uh, it is, and boy, I'm, and make sure, Mackenzie, I have the dates right, November 13 and 14, is that right? 13. 12 and 13. I, yep. I hate to say because I always <laughs> get that wrong. Okay, 12 and 13. Um, and this year we are featuring um, three threaded topics throughout the course of the two days. So we have um, one kind of focus on uh, space and classroom design and David Reed has agreed to uh, join us and kind of spearhead that. He'll do the keynote and also um, do several of our breakout sessions and we'll bring practitioners in who have used the UDL framework to redesign their learning spaces as well. Uh, we also have a strand on um, uh, UDL and executive function and um, uh, Allison Posey has joined, is agreed to join us and, and head that up. And then our third strand is on uh, UDL and um, uh, uh, response, uh, culturally responsive design. And Brian Dean will be here spearheading that and, and shepherding that. Um, concept through the two days. So the structure will be very similar to last year. For those of you who aren't familiar with what we did last year, the first day is a lot of learning and then day two is a lot of teamwork um, planning. So we'll ask teams to people to come in teams and to really uh, set down some implementation planning based around those three, one of those three topics and um, work toward uh, a strategy for implementing their ideas of how to bring this topic and UDL into their classrooms and schools, et cetera. So um, we're, we're looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great event. I know the teachers in my community are really excited about participating. And so we're reaching out to people in our area, not just in Michigan, but Ohio and Illinois and um, even Canada. We're close to Windsor and Toronto. Uh, so if you know of folks who might have some interest in attending, please feel free to share with that with them. Um, I think, Mackenzie, we sent out some flyers already, right, through the membership group. We have, yes. yes. So, and if, if anybody knows of any groups that would like to even just see a flyer, let me know and I'll send that your way. I'll actually drop a link into um, this document as well, so you just have access to it. Um, but yeah, there's also a website where on the UDL IRN, a web page on the UDL IRN site um, with more details on lodging and registration information and all that good stuff. So any questions there? No? Okay. Any other questions before we break? Well, I just want to segue onto that. You know, if you have a group in your area that you think would like to host and coordinate a regional event, um, we're trying to broaden it, not just, you know, sort of our, our Great Lakes was sort of our groundbreaking, try it out, see how it works um, location, but we're really looking to expand to move into areas closer to, I mean, I think Hawaii would be wonderful. Mackenzie and I would be happy to come there and facilitate that event, right, Mackenzie? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> You know, but if you guys think of some places or know if people are asking you about host or bringing UDL, the UDL summit to them, we'd like to hear about it. You know, it's actually interesting you say this because I, I'm getting more and more like one on like um, requests for PD and things from school, like, if, you know, as, as people start to hear about it. And that's an interesting thing to maybe do something a little more consolidated because I just can't respond to them all. And there's a few other people who do UDL stuff. But um, what is how how are these funded like how would people have to fund this if they wanted an event great question <laughs> i would let mackenzie answer it <laughs> uh steve you want to take that one <laughs> well the way we structured it to date not that this is the only way to do it because we definitely want to make sure that it, it adapts to be uh to meet your needs we've definitely looked for places that can provide uh, facilities and equipment so that we can keep the cost down. Um, also places that have folks like yourself, Kavita, that can uh, be experts and provide some of the training. Then we, uh, in the last two that we've done now at, uh, for the Great Lakes that Sue was highlighting, we have, you know, three major speakers that speak on various topics and, and stimulate interest around those topics within UDL. 
but we want to center it around time where there's a lot of hands-on uh, you know implementation and design focus so uh, from a from a funding structure so you know it's modest fee uh, for you know covering the costs of the speakers covering the cost of the meals and hopefully if you know the facilities are uh, offered up then we don't have to worry about funding those as well and do people yeah. Um, pay a registration fee? Yeah, so it, the attendants will pay a registration fee. Uh, and what we've done is given the flexibility to do just a single day, so just do the first day or do the two day. And then the two day fee would obviously be less than if you did twice a single day fee. Okay. Great, thank you. That's helpful. If I, if I get enough of these requests, I might see if people are interested in this. It's, it's hard to plan because people have so many priorities, but I'll see if I can, I'll bring it up if it comes up more. Yeah, I think the key is, and I think you're right, Steve, to mention that, the key is to have um, low cost overhead. So we are able to offer free meeting space. We have our own tech group who, you know, supports our, our tech, um, whether it's uh, providing the, um, technology in each each room or monitoring to make sure that things are working accurately and then we p pitched in a little money and the IRM pitches in a little money and we charge participants some money so you know it's not a huge right now money maker for the IRN and we'd like it to be to grow into that but really it's about servicing the field okay that's good to know that's interesting to see how you're bringing different players together to make it happen mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and certainly within the context, I mean, not the least of which Hawaii, right? Because of right. <laughs> off the mainland, but that, you know, regardless of where you're at within the United States, a lot of times uh, educators have difficulty getting uh, release. So having something that's more local uh, as opportunities throughout the U.S. makes it a lot easier for folks to still get similar exposure that they would get at the summit. And as Sue highlighted, uh, the current regional event in Great Lakes gives a lot more uh, focus, especially for teams that, that bring groups of people and, and want to work as design teams to, to work toward implementation in their district or school. Right. Like, so, for example, from, from my county's benefit, you know, my, my, my day job, I could never afford to bring 100 people to the summit. Right, they'd just never be able to have that level of experience. But if I could bring several speakers in and kind of build that same experience for people, it starts to again sort of um, generate and then respond to their excitement around UDL. So it's it really is from our perspective a big benefit for our county as well, even though you know we have to pitch in a little cash to go with it. Okay, and how many speakers do you have at the Great Lakes event? Typically, we'll have uh, three featured national speakers, and then they'll do uh, so. They'll do a keynote, and then a couple of breakout sessions, and then we'll have some local um, panels or individual speakers, depending on what the topics are. So, uh, what are some examples of topics last year, uh, Sue? That we have. Well, last year was mostly about coaching um, and implementation, and then. Um, uh, from principals perspective so we started have, we had three strands again um, and then we brought in local principals who are already doing UDL implementation and they spoke so we had like breakout sessions right and then um, on day two it was really we brought in our local or not our local our expert people and they helped facilitate that team planning which was really cool so we had small groups of people who got to sit down with Bill McGrath and just talk, pick his brain on how he's been implementing for 10 years. And, and you know, they, they could ask him all kinds of questions and um, they, we did some facilitated things along the way, but it, you know, and it's not the only way to do it. It's just the way we decided we wanted ours to look. So it, there really is a lot of flexibility. Yeah, that's the how you design these is really we're hoping to uh, cater to the local needs. What, what is, what are, what are you guys focusing on right now? Are you focusing on implementation? Are you focusing, you know, on research, whatever it might be? That's the beauty of it is you can kind of cater to those different needs. 
Okay, and one thing that I see, just knowing the situation here in Hawaii, we have one huge school district, all so we don't have different districts. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be some who need UDL 101, some who need, I mean, they're at such different levels. So it would be an interesting thing to plan because how to make sure people get things at different levels would be interesting. But again, if we if that, this, this happens, we can talk more if um, if I see a place to for this to happen. I definitely am getting enough requests that I feel like it's, there, there will be interest, but the question is just the logistics. And then the, the cost of getting people out to Hawaii just changes the, the yeah. scope of the event. So. Absolutely. Yep. Well, keep me posted and let me know if you have any more questions on that, because I'm happy to sit down with you and talk with me, you more in depth about that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions or comments? Things people want to share? No? All right, well, our next meeting, our next actual huddle meeting will be on October 17th at 3.30 Eastern. Um, in between then, monthly, I will send out, like I said, uh, a sheet just to fill out so that we can share out what our committees are working on, and then that will be posted online as well. So keep an eye out for my emails on that, and I'll send reminders if you guys are slow to, to fill that out. But other than that, that, that's all I got. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks, Mackenzie. Good seeing everybody. Yeah, good seeing you. Take Bye. care. Thank you again. Bye.